All right, well, welcome everybody to today's Zoom call. Today we're gonna to talk about some promising cancer solutions that are um, on the rise. A uh, patient asked me about this, so I wanted to address it. Um, one is this um, new CAR T cell therapy, and so that's what we're gonna talk about first. So CAR T cell therapy is where um, they remove your T cells, they remove your blood, separate out the T cells. So T cells are part of your immune system killer cells. And then they uh, adapt the T cells similar to what is done with the immunotherapy that is out there, like, like uh, Keytruda, but they're actually adapting your own T cells and changing the receptor sites on your own T cells so that they'll be attracted to that cancer. Um, so it's a really exciting therapy. And I'm going to try to share um, my desktop here so that um, I can show you this video of uh, CAR T cell therapy um, from uh, uh, MD Anderson. So hopefully this will work. So T cells you can listen to normal this. Normal cells of the immune system that help to fight off infections. T cells can react and kill cancer cells in the right circumstances. The problem is that some of the cancers can evade the immune system. CAR T cell therapy is very unique and different than any other treatment that we've had. It's a treatment where we take the patient's own T cells and we modify them in a laboratory so that they can recognize and react against their cancer. The patient undergoes apheresis, which is the process of removing the T cells. We modify them in a laboratory to express receptors to better recognize cancer. Those T cells are then expanded and grown to large numbers. We reinfuse those modified T cells back into the patient through an IV. The CAR T cells that are generated all have a similar receptor on them, and this receptor recognizes a cancer cell. Patients can get flu-like symptoms or neurologic symptoms from the treatment. Right now, we're giving patients CAR T cell therapy in the hospital because their symptoms can become very severe. We're currently treating childhood and young adults acute lymphoblastic leukemia. In addition, we're treating patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, particularly diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. MD Anderson researchers are working to expand application of CAR T cells to other cancers, including solid tumors. Okay, so that is some exciting um, therapy that is on the way, we hope. Um, and the problem is right now it's really um, only been FDA approved for some childhood leukemias and certain types of lymphoma. So it's not available for everyone. Um, and there's other problems too, and I wanna to address that too. I was actually gonna do a video on this a few weeks ago um, and do a uh, post on this so everybody get this on Facebook, but then somebody asked the question, so I thought I better do this. So really what's done with CAR T therapy is that you're collecting the person's own blood, they're taking the T cells, they're uh, changing the receptor site on the T cell. Because remember, one of the problems with fighting cancer is that cancer cells are your own body cells. They're not um, a virus or bacteria that is an enemy trying to kill your body. So your immune system isn't supposed to react to your own cells. That's what immunotherapy does too, is it changes that receptor site on the um, T cells as they attack the cancer, but it's done through a drug. CAR T therapy is, is taking out your blood, changing your T cells, reproducing them in the laboratory, putting them back in the body so that they start fighting the body, start fighting the cancer. The problem is, is that it will start fighting all cells, and that's what the doctor was alluding to on that short video. And you can get even a worse autoimmune reaction than you can with a Keytruda. Um, but you can get a good kill of the cancer. So there's some promising to it. The problem that they're having with it is the cost. So an article that I was going to share um, a few weeks ago was an article that Medicare came out and said they're not going to pay for it. Uh, the problem is like this article here, this is from May 2019, um, 
this doctor, professor of medicine at uh, Oregon Health Science University, stated that the cost of care, the cost of the drug itself is over $475,000 for a year use of this. And then it could cost a hospital 1.5 million, and that's in an uncomplicated case. It could be well over 200 or $2 million to treat somebody with CAR T cell therapy. So uh, insurance companies are just balking at it and not approving it. So it's gonna be very difficult for the cost of that care. We're going and doing chemotherapy, uh, even long extended several years of chemotherapy can still be under a million dollars. This is gonna be well over a million dollars right off the bat. And um, it's looking like they're not gonna be able to get that price down. Uh, another article from a European uh, um, paper in England talked about th the same thing. The price is the real hindering point, so it's not gonna be used. And it's unfortunate that it comes down to cost. I have no idea what the cost of the manufacturer is. I have no idea if this is a gouging issue. But nothing I have read about it as far as cost um, has shown or even alluded to that it is a, it is a drug company gouging issue. It's just that it, the cost of doing a procedure like this is so exorbitant. So that's, that's all I am familiar with. So there's a lot of uh, information. You could certainly Google search it yourself about the information of just the issues with it. And then lastly, it's like anything else, you know, we get really excited about a new type of medication or a new type of medical therapy like this. But even at this, you look at the survival rates, this is the way the cost of the value of CAR T cell therapy, meaning, okay, it costs, you know, five times more than standard chemotherapy and, you know, a hundred times more than doing an alternative approach. But then do you get better results? I mean, you do have to weigh that out. You know, are you getting better results for the money? Um, from a financial perspective, you have to look at this. I mean, here's just one, 75 patients down in this study, 75 patients treated with this type of cell therapy analysis found that overall remission rate within three months was 81%. But how much better is that with lymphoma than, than um, other therapies? This study did uh, compare that. The rates of event-free survival, meaning not having a reoccurrence, were 73% in six months and 50% in 12 months. That means that 50% of the people within a year after treatment, the disease came back. Um, so to me, that's not the greatest. So how much better is it than um, standard chemotherapy on some of these some of these cancers that have poor results with chemotherapy, then maybe this is a viable uh, uh, care option, and I can understand uh, their position of that. Um, but uh, you know, we certainly get better results of that with our lymphoma patients. So we haven't had um, very many childhood leukemia patients, but so I understand with diseases that aren't responding to normal chemotherapy. And when you only have, you know, chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery in your pocket as a treatment procedure, these type of new treatment procedures are very promising and very exciting to them. Um, they're not quite as exciting to me. So, uh, but it's worthwhile talking about them. And if somebody could have their life saved through this a process like this, or new processes that are coming up, well, I'm all on board for that. So, all right, so hopefully that helps explain a little bit of what CAR T cell therapy is and why you haven't had it offered to you by your oncologist, because it just, number one, isn't available, and number two, insurance companies won't pay for it. Um, and the, that's going to take a number of years to work all that out. Um, I know uh, one of the patients that uh, inquired about it to me to, uh, today was look at, they were talking about uh, Mexico clinics possibly offering this. And I don't know if they're just talking about it right now or they're actually offering it. We'll have to find out. All right, so I'm going to open it up. I unmute you all, so you are all unmuted. 
So if you have any questions, now is the time to chime in if you want to talk about what we spoke about or something completely different. Here's your opportunity. Hi, Dr. Dr. Connors. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Okay. So I will find those letters I sent. You're talking about the letter I sent to Jill Tracy about David Finger, right? Okay. Yep. 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 Yeah. Okay. Who has a question? Okay, I do, Dr. Connors. Uh huh. Can you hear me? I can. I'm sorry, this is my first time on the Zoom call. Oh, uh, this is Karen Settle. <laughs> um, I was at the clinic July 2nd, and um, you were, I think you were on vacation, but my question is this. I had a radical hysterectomy and had choriocarcinoma, which is supposed to be a very aggressive cancer. And um, my HCG levels after my surgery were 635. And then they had dropped to 352. Well, in a matter of one month, they shot up to 12,996. Um, and I just got the results back yesterday because I'm having, you know, my oncologist check that every every month. My question is, I've been I've been very diligent to do the RIF. I've not missed one time since I've been there. I'm, I'm diligent on my diet and all my, you know, my um, protocols, and I just didn't know if there was something else I needed to be doing or why it would jump that much. I just, just anything that you have, I was just wondering. Sure. Did you get the email that Michelle sent you? Oh, I haven't checked. I, I, yeah. I haven't so checked today. I had her respond to you right away. So I would want oh. to do, I want to do, um, I, I, I wanted to talk to you because I want to look at any other labs that you had done. Okay. Did you have anything done or any other scans done at all? Yes, I had a, a CT scan. Okay. Um, and all that, I just sent you all my paperwork from my oncologist like two weeks ago and you have everything that I have. Okay. So let's schedule, a time. let's schedule a time for you and I to talk tomorrow. Perfect. Okay, I can do it at your convenience. Okay, if you want to just call the office either right after this call or tomorrow morning and schedule a time, we'll get it all on board and I want, because I got some ideas for you. Well, Dr. Connors, thank you. Thank you so much and I will call tomorrow morning. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Uh, any Dr. other questions? Dr. Connors, this uh -huh. is Marie. Yeah. Um, I've, the last uh, four or five days, I've been having a lot of aching in the back of my neck, in the back of my head, and uh, it uh, made it hard for me to be able to move my head because of stiffness, because of the aching, I guess. And then last night when I woke up, it I could feel in my chest uh, that it was, it's been sore when I breathe a little bit deeper than shallow. It gets uh, a little bit uh, harder. It, it gives, it hurts. But anyway. In your chest? Yeah, but um, I, you know, I've been doing all the protocol that I'm supposed to be doing as far as supplements and diet and the rife every night. And like, even right now I'm doing the foot bath and uh, I've been doing the things. I just don't know what else to do with this. Okay. That I let's, don't let's walk through this a little bit. So pain in the chest that, oh, I haven't had that much pain in my chest through this and pain upon a deep breath. Um, indicates a couple of things. You could have uh, rib involvement, meaning a worst case scenario, metastasis to a rib, um, but then you'd have more pinpoint pain along that rib most likely. So it's probably not that. 
uh, next worst case scenario is uh, slight pneumonia. Um, and that's something you want to jump on right away. So uh, having a lung infection can be uh, a big problem. So uh, I would suggest on your RIFE program, in the alphabetical listing, you have uh, several pneumonia programs. Are you, can you hear me, Marie? Yes, I can. There's several pneumonia programs. The one I like best is the one that says pneumonia blaster. And we're, we're taking a shot in the dark here. Well, what if it's not pneumonia? Well, so what? We just want to make sure you don't have a lung infection because it's not uncommon when you have some immune compromise from, uh, from cancer that you can end up getting a secondary lung infection and a pneumonia. Mm -hmm. And people can die from ammonia, pneumonia and not from the cancer. So run that pneumonia blaster. Also, if you have any um, like herbal sprays, um, some people carry like an herbal throat spray. Um, if you have any uh, herbal uh, immune stimulants like echinacea or garlic can be good for that as well. Or astragalus can be good for that. Do you have any of those in your cupboard? Well, I have garlic, but I don't have a spray of garlic. You could take it, or you could take it orally. You're not on a in a, a blood thinner, are you? No. Okay, so you can take garlic as a capsule, um, or echinacea as a capsule if you have that, or any other immune stimulants as a capsule. Um, I just don't want you to have a secondary uh, pneumonia or something like that. Okay. So do that tonight, run that pneumonia blaster. I don't remember, I think it's only a couple hours long. Maybe you wanna run that a couple times tonight. And then if you don't feel like it's any better or you feel like it's worse, I want you to call me tomorrow morning and set up a time to talk. Okay, thank so, you. So don't ignore it, stay on it. Um, also some essential oils can help if you have thieves run some uh, essential oils in a diffuser at night, that can be helpful in your room at night and make I sure that you're not getting a breeze on you or anything like that. I do have thieves. I have the essential oil of thieves. Good, if you have a diffuser, run that in your bedroom tonight. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. <clears throat> Any other questions? Dr. Connors? Uh-huh. This is Janet Kissling. Can you hear me? I certainly can. Oh, great. This is my first time. I haven't been able to get on and talk at all. I've tried numerous times, and so I'm so glad it's working today. Oh, good. Um, I have been doing marvelous since I was there five weeks ago. Oh, good. That's good. I, I had three, three or four days of feeling rotten when I got home, and that my energy levels jumped up. I just, there were so many days, I almost felt like, did I really have cancer? Because feel, I felt so good. Good. And then last Friday, I could feel myself a little bit of a tinge of not feeling so good. And by Saturday, I was having pain in my upper arms. Um, my shoulders, some too. And then I did a coffee enema in the morning. And when I would lay to my right side, I could feel like a bubble of gas that popped up into my left side. And it has been bothering me um, quite a bit since then. Where is it exactly? If you were. Well, and so yesterday I started thinking about it and I thought, yeah, it almost feels like I have a rib out of place. And I went to my chiropractor and he said he thinks it's my floating ribs on my left side. So was it on the left, on the side of your body? Yes. Okay. So, uh -huh. so a couple possibilities there then. Um, you, uh, you could have strained, I mean, you, you got to remember that we have the right to have more than one problem at any given time, and we always want to 
you know, you have a diagnosis of cancer, you tend to attribute everything to the cancer. And that's not yes. necessarily fair. Uh, yep. so you, you could have strained a rib. Yes, you could have. You could have strained the diaphragm there. Um, you uh, so doing some uh, like topical pain relief, like icy hot or something on there. That would be a first choice. Uh huh. If you have access to a tens unit, that would oh, be another unit, choice. A, unit, a tens. Tens unit. T e n s. Okay, don't. I have a uh, cheap machine. I tried that yesterday. Yeah, you could. A cheap machine will help move lymph, and that could be beneficial if that aggravates it. That's a sign of something more structural. Um, if it uh, so, a tens unit is like an electrical stim machine for pain. Okay. okay, I don't have that. Um, they're really inexpensive. We have, I think we have them on our store. They're like 35 okay. bucks. Um, and that is a good thing to use over a uh, musculoskeletal area, your back, your, your ribs, um, to help relieve pain. What it does is it stimulates encephalins and endorphins for pain relief. Um, but that's going to really work on structural issues. The third thing that could be going on, you could have referral pain from a cancer site to that area. Um, uh, you could have referral pain from your gut to that area. So how's, yeah. your, how's your digestion been? Have you had normal bio, bowel movements since then? Yes, yes. Well, that's the other thing is I've been doing, so I wasn't doing so well at my, at, at doing the, I'd been doing coffee enemas two to three times a week, but I decided I was gonna step up with all of that, and so I've done them the last three days in a row. Uh -huh. um, I'm wondering, I've done that. I've also got, I was reading in your book, and I really decided to go back to the Budwig program. I kind of had let that drop. So I added that a couple of days ago. So what I've, I guess my question is, I'm having these, these weird pains, which I agree with you. I'm not so sure that it's like, I'm not so worried about it being cancer, except for my arms. I keep wondering about the bones in my upper arms. Um, that and, but then I'm just going back to what I've had so many times over is weakness and shakiness. Um, okay. Which I've had so many times when I'm heavily detoxing. And okay. So I'm trying to decide would would uh, doing the coffee enemas, could I be just doing too much? Would that cause a problem? And then adding the, I don't know. Did we already do your genetics? We didn't get your genetics no, back. No, I, no, I don't, I haven't heard back from anyone about that. I would think it would be soon. Okay, so we didn't get them back then. So what I would say is that you do have the possibility of uh, having a certain gene where you do not detox caffeine very quickly. Um, and then if that's true, yeah, you could just be having a reaction to the caffeine and the coffee enemas. So why, okay. don't you just, why don't we just take that out, stop that, stop the budwig because it could be a reaction to the, um, the uh, casein and the, and the um, cottage cheese as well. I was doing the Budwig even before I came out to you, but what I wasn't doing was I didn't know about adding the ground flaxseed and I never did honey in it. I just did fruit, which was okay. another question. I wondered, is it okay for me to do a teaspoon of honey every day? Cause a teaspoon, you'd be fine, yeah. All right, and then the ground flaxseed, uh, those are the two things I I had not been doing, but I'd been doing the all of the the cottage cheese and the oil for months. And okay. then I stopped for a few weeks. After I got back from out there, being out there, I stopped because there were so many things trying to get everything started and do everything. And Well, so let's, let's stop that again because your body could have gotten used to being casein free and then you went back on it and you just had a tummy reaction to it and then you okay. get a reflux pain. 
Yeah, I have to say that I've got a lot of gas and right now. I mean, I just feel like I'm really bloated and my ribs are hurting even. And one more thing I wondered is I ran out of that. Is it called betaine? B-E-T-A? Oh. Yeah, well, see, that's probably your problem right there. So I be, wondered, I have it coming. It's coming. I ordered okay. it from the store, and it should be here tomorrow. So, so that that's is what's going to be your digestive aid for everything going into your stomach. Okay. I'm going to put up on the Facebook page, again, this uh, video that I created with Michelle a few months ago on um, how to pull down your hiatal hernia. Mm-hmm. So a hiatal hernia is when your stomach can kind of creep up into the hiatus, the hole that is made mm -hmm. by your diaphragm um, and where your esophagus comes down through your stomach uh, or down through, your, uh, through the um, diaphragm and the stomach is right underneath it. So um, that's commonly a problem. Uh, and that could give you symptoms that you just described. Okay. So I made a video since uh, patients can't always be here to how to pull down your hiatal hernia on your own. So I'm looking for it right now. Here it is. And I will post it right back on Facebook right now. Awesome. So that um, just look at that and try doing that. And that will hopefully help too. All right. So my, my main question is I was doing so good. I mean, I had tons of energy, almost too much energy because I hate to admit it. I wasn't resting like I should have been. And we were tanning and I didn't get as much sleep. So I went from being like four weeks of tons of energy, feeling great, little to no pain to in a matter of two or three days, feeling really bad again. Is this something where I can, where I need to say, oh my goodness, I need to call and I need to reschedule and. Uh, no, 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 I wouldn't say that, but it's good to go, huh, what is this? What did yeah. I change? What do I need to do differently? Uh -huh. it's, it's not uncommon at all for a person okay. with cancer to feel great and then feel really lousy. I mean, that's, that's the entire story of my life. So, yeah. um, it's, I've been reading a little bit of your, I, I appreciate you so much, Dr. Connors, and I got on today and started reading some of the posts you had put out about things you're going through. And it is such, I'm so sorry that you're having to go through it, but it's such a blessing and I am praying for you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Well, and I hope that I'm going through it for a purpose to help you and other people. So that's, that it's, that it's all worth it. So, yeah. Thank you for all of this, and I will just continue on. I'll, I'll hold, I was a do, I was doing fine with the coffee enemas every two two to three times a week, and it wasn't bothering me. Maybe it's just too much. Maybe it's a combination of yeah. probably is a combination of several things, but that's what I'm, that's what we're here for. So don't feel bad about calling and set up at a time to talk or. Yeah or getting on the Facebook page and ask that question of myself or Michelle directly, or, or getting on this call and do just what you did. Yeah. So that's what it's for. Thank you. I just always feel like I'm being a bother. So I appreciate you answering <laughs> this. No, questions. you're not. You're not being a bother. Okay, yeah. thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so we had another question. Can you s just say a few words to help me reconcile God's sovereignty and my complete belief that he is able to heal? Good question. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so let's understand a couple things first. Um, yeah, we, we all want God to heal our problems. I want God to heal my cancer as much as you want God to heal your cancer, maybe. Um, but we have to realize that if it wasn't for God's sovereignty, my body wouldn't be functioning right now. I have a hundred billion billion cells that have to do a hundred million activities each every second in order for me to even sustain life. So if it wasn't for God's sovereignty right now, I wouldn't be talking to you. It's only by God's blessing that I have life at all. So it's, um, if uh, I know we don't want this disease 
and we want to live to be a hundred or whatever your goals and your dreams are. Uh, but we want to, in our, um, our, our walk of sanctification here on earth, um, we want to um, make sure that um, the greatest desire of our heart is to um, become more and more like his son Jesus and to glorify him by developing a deeper relationship with him. So even though I want to be healed from my cancer and I want to go out on my boat, which I did only three times this year on my pontoon boat, and I want to go do stuff uh, with my wife and my kids and my grandkids, those are all wonderful blessings. Those are all mercies from God. And I need to make sure I stay focused on that fact that those are mercies from God and that those aren't my idols in my life. Those are blessings because of God's mercy. And that helps me at least keep an understanding that, the, that my desires um, more than anything else have to align with what his desires are. And I just made mention to um, you just a second ago that I would gladly have this cancer and struggle with it if it can bring glory to God by blessing somebody else. If that's how God wants to use me, is for me to go through suffering so that I can be a blessing because of that, that I would rather bring glory to God and spend uh, eternity with him um, than to live to be a hundred and fulfill my earthly self-centered dreams here on earth. And that, that desire in itself doesn't make me a holier person. That desire in itself only comes from the mercies of God. So what I'm saying is, I, from a selfish perspective, we're all narcissists. From a humanly perspective, we're all sinners. That's all we do is think of ourselves. But if it wasn't for the grace of God, um, we would all be like Sodom and Gomorrah. The point is, is that the only way that I can bring God glory is to ask him for his mercies and ask him for his desires in my heart. So this is hard to doctrine to go on and explain, but if I could just encourage everybody, um, whether you have cancer or not, to just your, your prayer to be, yeah, I, I pray that my cancer goes away, but more and much more than that, do I pray that I can bring glory to God today and that I can um, um, take joy in the mercies that he shows me and the grace that he shows me today. And, um, and then it's not so important that my cancer goes away. It's more important that I bring him glory today. And uh, because I'm going to spend eternity somewhere. <laughs> I want to spend eternity getting to know my Heavenly Father more and more and more every single day. Um, and uh, I'd gladly suffer on this earth to help someone else um, accomplish that same purpose. So my prayer is, yes, I pray for you guys that your cancer goes away, that you can live a long and healthy life. But um, uh, I pray for your maturity. I pray that you learn from this disease. I pray that you grow through this disease. I pray that your sanctifying walk here on earth through this disease brings you to the point of you being able to be thankful for your cancer because it changed you and molded you and shaped you into a different person um, and ultimately uh, brought you closer to him. So, sorry to get on the preaching board there, but um, um, I just thank you for um, the talk today, and please um, send your questions. If you have questions that you don't want to speak out loud, um, uh, send them to the email with the address to a uh, Zoom question in the, um, in the um in the email so we make sure that we see it and we'll try to address them and um, 
I just ask that God bless you guys and, and that he keeps your mind uh, focused on uh, his ultimate purpose for you and that um, uh, you can bring him more glory today than yesterday. All right. Bye-bye, mm -hmm. you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Love you all. Love you too. God bless you. Pray for, for you. Thank you.